Solara back in 1992 opened the doorway of the 1111, which is the beginning of the Ascension process. And I was very much a part of all of that back in those days. I've done a lot of grid work. I've restructured the ley lines, all sorts of things to be able to handle the new energy of the earth. The interesting thing is, is that this, this doorway was supposed to close on December 31st in 2011 and spirit gave us a dispensation and asked for, you know, gave us another 12 years. And what this really is, is about getting people to wake up and come into the light because there is going to be a paradigm shift. The world is changing there. It's going to flip one way or another. And the question is, is do you want to come from a place of love, security, have love, peace, happiness, joy, that kind of thing? Or do you want to stay in the chaos of this planet? Because it's very chaotic. The thing that, that everybody is observing, including myself, in, is how black and white we are as a nation, as a world. There's no gray area anymore. It's either black or white. And believe it or not, that has been by design. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. The purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone and that you are in control of your life. It does not matter where you come from or what your circumstances are. We've all experienced pain, suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, and hopelessness. The show is here to help you turn those dark moments around and create a whole new you. Despite your success, have you felt lonely, angry, frustrated, or even suicidal? Do you long to be supported, recognized, and respected for who you are? Not just for the awards and accolades on your walls. You don't want to be known, identified, or remembered in a way that feels fraudulent because you achieve things out of obligation and not passion. Do you find yourself sitting quietly at lunch, listening to what lights you up only to feel shame, fear, frustration, and resentment, your inner turmoil and limiting beliefs surface, making you feel not good enough and afraid of doing something different. You've read the books, attended the seminars, and practiced new concepts and principles, yet you still find yourself in the same rut. The lies you tell yourself perpetuate a cycle of disappointment. You say you'll change, but your inner self-limiting beliefs keeps running the show, creating a self-limiting prophecy. As a certified coach, I empower you to become your authentic self. My soul journey program aligns you with your true self and guides you to find your soul vision, helping you discover your purpose in life. I provide tools to step into the true magnificence and remember who you are. And if you're interested in learning more, contact me at brave TV at Kathleen M Check out Awakening Spirit, an aromatherapy-based body care line offering alternative healing remedies using natural and organic ingredients. Use the coupon code BRAVETV for a 40% discount. The products are guaranteed, and if something isn't working, you can re we can reformulate it specifically for you. Visit grandma's grandmasnaturalremedies.net, which is a CBD company that includes essential oils in every blend, and with each blend, either a broad spectrum or an isolate is, in, is included. Every product is tested and the lab results are on the website. Use the coupon code BRAVETV for a 20% discount. Each week, I start the show with sound of the tuning forks, bringing in love, happiness, and balance to set the tone for the show and bring out the, both, the best in both my guest and myself. So let's begin.
I'm supposed to have a guest today, Lynn Rivers. She hasn't arrived yet, so I'm not sure if something's going on, but as, as, it, be, as it is, I know how to carry on the show all by myself, so I don't have any issues with this. So hopefully everything is okay, and hopefully she'll show up in case um, you guys wanted to hear what she had to say, because she does have a very interesting story. Anyways, so let's talk about what's going on in my life. There's a lot. In, and let's talk about, I really want to talk about what's coming as far as on an energetic level with spirit. I know that this might be a little much for most of you to understand, but Solara back in 1992 opened the doorway of the 1111 which is the beginning of the ascension process. And I was very much a part of all of that back in those days. I've done a lot of grid work. The, I've restructured the ley lines, all sorts of things to be able to handle the new energy of the earth. The interesting thing is, is that this, this doorway was supposed to close on December 31st in 2011. And Spirit gave us a dispensation and asked for you know, gave us another 12 years. And what this really is, is about getting people to wake up and come into the light because there is going to be a paradigm shift. The world is changing there. It's going to flip one way or another. And the question is, is do you want to come from a place of love, security, have love, peace, happiness, joy, that kind of thing? Or do you want to stay in the chaos of this planet? Because it's very chaotic. The thing that that everybody is observing, including myself, and is how black and white we are as a nation, as a world. There's no gray area anymore. It's either black or white. And believe it or not, that has been by design. That is for us to make decisions, very cognitive, cognitive decisions of who we want to be, where we want to go. That's why connection is becoming more and more prevalent. People are tired of the same old way. There is so much light being inundated on this planet and all that light is coming into each and every single one of us. When that light enters into our body, what it's doing is lighting you up, but it's also lighting you to see the dark recesses of your being. So if you've had trauma or sexual abuse or beatings or rape or whatever it is, whatever trauma being held at gunpoint, you know, whatever it is, you're going to have to face that. And I know that that's a very hard and difficult place to go, but there's a reason why you went through that. There's a reason why it's time to wake up and look at it. And I can talk about this because I have been through it all in not everything, but enough that is enough. And I had to come and find peace with that. I had to understand that I needed to learn and release the anger that I felt, the resentment. And I learned how to do all of this at when this earth was in a very dark place this i mean the earth is not dark anymore where it was when i was doing it where it was three steps forward two steps back understanding how our minds work which we have so much more awareness about how our minds work how spirit works how we think how we feel about things but the the point is the overview of what i want to say before i go into any kind of detail is that this is a critical time in history for this earth we are ascending and that means the way that it's being designed as this doorway closes on November 11th, it's if you're on the boat or not, so to speak. And this boat is going to, I'm going to show you through with my hands. So here we are. So starting on November 22nd, as the boat leaves, so to speak, or the plane or whatever you want to call it, it's going to be very, very slow in moving. So that means the polarities are going to be different. So as if you're on this side saying, I want peace, love, and happiness, or if you're on this side that you want the chaos, this side is not going to be able to live with this side and vice versa. So what that is going to be is that as we move further and further away from the darkness, if we're choosing to be on the boat, we're, it's going to just... And it will flip in 2026. It is predicted that things will shift. 
I don't know what that looks like. I can't tell you. All I know is that I was told there's another earth out there. There's two earths. So the ones who are choosing to ascend, and this is a monumental time. This is when all the um, 2000 years ago, Jesus, Buddha, all of the ascended masters did the same thing. This is the same thing that happened 2000 years ago. And so as we shift, it's, it's said that if you're living with somebody in a dysfunctional relationship and you make the decision that you want this, but you're still living with this person here because you couldn't find it within you, but your intention was to leave and to change and to evolve, they say that one day you will wake up and they won't be there anymore. And it's not that they're not going to just not be there. It's you're not going to have remembrance of them. Now, how that really looks, I don't know, but this is what I have heard. And it, may, and it makes sense that this is what's going to happen. And so this is a time for preparation. This is a time for you guys to start making a decision of what you want to do, where you want to go, and how do you want to be. Because if you're going, to, if you want to stay here in this chaos, that you're welcome to do that. There's no judgment on anybody for that decision. Because like I chose not to go back in 2000 years ago for whatever reason. I think it was so that I could learn more and be better prepared for the next time the ascension came in. And then that's why they predicted the 2000 years of love, peace and happiness. And this is that part. We are there. Everything is moving in that direction. And I think when there's a lot of people out there, they're feeling a sense of urgency right now. They're feeling like they're supposed to do something, but they don't know what they do, they're supposed to do. They're feeling the angst within themselves. They're feeling tired and frustrated and who am I? And they're seeking, they're desperately seeking for people that are in the light. The way showers, it's time for the way showers to come forward. And that's what I'm doing is I've been doing this my whole life. I've been on this path. And because I chose to do all of the work that I've done on myself and it wasn't easy and it's not easy work by any stretch of the imagination, but it's about coming into alignment with yourself. I am in the, I am, I've put out a course about coming into alignment and your soul vision and your soul journey and learning what that is. And this is the time for things to start moving in a new direction. Do you want money? Do you want love? Do you want friendship? Do you want companionship? All of that is there for you you need to come into alignment with yourself first. You need to know what's going on up here in your mind so you can take those next steps. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the bold brave TV network. And as I was saying, we know that this, we have the crazy, crazy times are happening, especially with the election of what's going on with, you know, the Trump assassination, with this thing with Biden possibly t stepping down and all of that. And we don't have to participate in this drama if we choose not to. And that's what I want to really talk about is the, you have all the power and control in your mind. You can decide what you want. Yes. Am I subject to what's going on out there? Yes, I am. But is that my world? No, it's not. Whatever is going to happen around us doesn't mean it has to happen to us. And that's the main thing that this whole process is about is taking responsibility for what you think, what you say, how you are, how you're being. As you take more and more responsibility for all of you, and I mean all of you, life's going to change and get a lot easier. And that's the one thing that I have probably noticed in the probably the last three years is how much my life has changed, how much I have changed, how much I'm growing. There are things happening to me that are just mind boggling right now. And part of that is, is because I'm listening to spirit. Spirit's talking to me. I'm listening. I'm doing what they're asking. Sometimes it's like, really, you want me to do what? Okay. And I do it. But the point is, is that everything starts coming towards me because the more I move and step into myself and my higher self and who I want to be. And I want to go back into being 
you know, a child of God, you know, we are children of God, regardless of what your faith or belief is. We still have a higher being that is driving us. We do not breathe ourselves. Okay. We do not. God breathes us and we are bigger beings than what we are. And we have forgotten everything about who we are. So we could have this amazing experience on planet earth. Oh my God. Sometimes I wonder why we made this decision, but we thought it would be fun. Okay. I thought it would be fun. It was not fun, but take it, you know, just don't take things so seriously because that's something I had to do because I took everything very seriously. And now I'm just taking it more with a grain of salt. And there was a van, I was in a mastermind this morning and I decided to offer something about where I'm at. And there's a lot of things I'm going to change up the show a little bit, nothing major, but just a little bit, um, because I'm just trying to dial in what my viewers want. And I'm also starting to reach out to my network about the program that I'm offering and start going into coaching full time, 100% all in and really come out of the closet, so to speak. And I was talking about that. I'm not afraid, but yet I'm afraid I'm hesitant, but I'm not hesitant. It's like, I'm having these conflicting emotions at the same time. So when I was talking, one of the women offered, well, you know, if there's a fear, there's a, there's something fear wants you to know. And I never asked that question because I've always gone through fear because I've learned there's nothing to fear, but fear itself. You walk through the, you do it, you feel the fear and do it anyways. And fear just dissipates. And I know that to be true. But I never thought to ask, what does fear want me to know? So as she's talking and people are kind of just kind of just discussing whatever this was, as far as where I'm, I was feeling, I sat there and I said, oh my God, I know what this is. What if they say yes to me? And I got goosebumps all up and down. I almost started into hysterical tears because it was a truth. What if they say yes to me? Now I have had a limiting belief and a paradigm that I was told my whole life of nobody wants to hear what you have to say. So keep your mouth shut. We don't want to hear what you have to say. Shut your mouth. I'd say something. I would get smacked. It didn't matter. I mean, I was learned, I was taught to keep my mouth shut and I spent a long time opening up my throat chakra. I literally could not speak back in the day. In my twenties, I would vomit on people and it usually was in a fit of rage because I was in so much pain and I didn't know how to communicate. I chose to work for lawyers, become a paralegal so I could learn to communicate because if anybody knows how to communicate, it's a lawyer and, and see both sides and learn how to problem solve, how to reason, rationalize all these things. And I always played the devil advocate when complaints would come in because I could read, I could understand where the defendant was coming in or the plaintiff, depending on who filed the complaint. Well, whoever that was complaint, whoever we were representing. And I would read this and then I would ask questions to my boss at the time to get, well, how would you answer this? Because what they say, what they're saying is a very valid claim, or at least that's what it appeared to be. And, you know, so that was kind of where I started on learning to get a hold of things. Now I always knew that I was in touch with spirit. I knew that I could read people. I could do tarot cards. I could do all of that stuff. I just didn't really like it because I had access to like everything about a person in front of me and I didn't like it, especially if there was like icky stuff and I didn't want to deal with icky. So I didn't, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to develop my rational mind. I wanted to be able to understand more about who I was and anchor that in. Now that wasn't necessarily the path that I originally chose for myself, but it was the path that I decided to do because that's where our free will and free will come, our free choice and free will comes in. Now, believe it or not, I'm still back where I, I was originally supposed to be. I've always been where I'm supposed to be. I just kind of deviated and that's okay. And I'm happy that I deviated because I think I became more aware of myself and my thoughts because of it. But as we were talking about this feeling of what does fear have to say or teach me? And the first thing I want to do besides cry was like, I want to drink, I want a glass of wine. So I don't have to feel this because it was the way it felt was like, ew, 
it, it was like I did, I was so uncomfortable with this because it's like, oh my God, this is another big stepping stone for me coming out and everything is right there. Believe it or not, <clears throat> because of the way the energies are, we're also, there's a lot of quantum mechanics happening as well. And I've been experiencing that as well and understanding what's happening on a quantum field because it's like I am timeline jumping either going into another timeline, future self, not quite sure. Some of it, I think it's a little bit of both. And seeing that I'm there, I'm already there. I feel it. It's embodied, that kind of thing. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm asking, okay, let's quantum leap. And so I've been asking, how do you quantum leap? Because I want to know. And what's on the internet is not necessarily quantum leaping. So I'm doing what I'm doing because spirit teaches me how to do these things. And so I, I'm, I asked, well, I want to know what she did, who's, who's living the life that I'm going to, what she did to get to where I am, to, where she is, what can I do to bring it back so I can accelerate my growth process? <clears throat> and at, what I did was, I think this fear thing was, that was what she did. She embraced that. She embraced taking on that whole part of, oh my God, because the other thing that's been happening that I've noticed too, is people are, I've been getting, receiving a lot, a lot, a lot of compliments about how I speak, how I present things, how I have a deep wisdom and I deliver it in such a Kathleen way, whatever that means but it's profound and I'm moving people. And then my coach yesterday, I said, I don't want to be a burden to anyone and I don't want to do certain things. And he said, Kath, that is the last thing you will ever be to anybody in this organization is that you are moving and leaps and bounds and you are bringing a totally different thought process to everyone here. Everybody's elevating because of you. And I'm like, okay, wow. I am, when I went to Cabo, this woman comes up to me and she's like, oh, Kathleen, hi. And I'm like, I don't know who you are because I didn't. I had no idea who she was. And she's like, can I give you a hug? And I'm like, okay. And it, it, she's like, but you're Kathleen. And, I'm, and then finding out other people are like, oh, I love when she talks. I really want to know what she had to say and whatever. And I had to, I'm bringing this in, okay? This is not something I'm used to hearing. I'm just being Kathleen because that's all I know how to do is be Kathleen. So I'm being Kathleen. And, and so when, you, when I'm feeling this, this is all stemming up to and helping me to realize that I am moving into that next direction. I am stepping into the true magnificence and greatness of who I am. I am su ending suffering in silence because we all suffer in silence. I don't care. When I was in Cabo, I told men, I said, you're suffering. And it's like, yeah, all these men admitted it. Women will never admit they suffer in silence, but promise me you, we all do. And the whole thing is, is that I started realizing and changing my direction and mission. Yes, I'm still about waking you up, but it's also about, you no longer have to suffer. We don't, we're not here to suffer. We were never here to suffer. We're here to learn, not suffer. We take on that drama. We take all this stuff on for whatever reason, but we don't have to do that. So when I'm watching the drama of this world unfold the way it is, and don't get me wrong, there are days when I'm like, oh my God, I signed up for this, really? And then I realize, no, it doesn't have to be my world. I'm part of this world, but I'm not in the world. I don't have to participate because even if things fall apart, it's always been shown through history if wars are going on and bombs are going off and all sorts of things, babies are still being born. People are still having sex. People are still making money. People are still meeting each other and getting married. Life always goes on regardless of what is going on in the world around us. Always. And if you stay to that part of who you are and why you're here, that you're about cooperation. You're about wanting family and connection and society norms because we are so isolated as a world anymore. 
And once we get rid of all this isolation and we start banding together and becoming one again, because we all are one, all of us, we are all part of the bigger piece. It's just we're little individual aspects. And this is what I loved about, I just realized or reheard this a couple of days ago, take a star. We are the rays of the star. So we're all one in the center of the star, but the points going out is each one of us in our individual rays. And that's what I think is really amazing is if you can start looking at things in a different way and seeing a bigger picture in a different viewpoint, it's going to help making you move forward into a new direction a lot easier but you probably will need support because this is not a time that you have all the time in the world to like, I'll get to it when I get to it. Time is of the essence. And as long as we're, we start listening to our internal voice and trusting that your life will change that much quicker. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the bold brave TV network. So as I was saying, which was a lot, <laughs> it really is time for us to dive into ourselves. And what I found since I hired a couple of coaches this year, it's made all the difference in the world for me um, because I didn't hire people before because I didn't trust people. I always thought people had an agenda because most people did have an agenda and I was raised with an agenda. My father was like, I'll give you this if you tell me this or do this or whatever. And my entire family is, is that type of person, people. And I just don't tolerate that very well. And when I started moving and changing and really looking into the deeper depths of myself, and I think a lot of it had to do when I produced, when I published the last book, I really had to go into it because there was a depth of pain and suffering that's in the third book awakened that I really did not understand fully at the time what I was going through. And all these years later, when I read all the books, because spirit said to reread the books because all everything I need to know is in those books and they were right. And I think when I did that is when everything started to shift. I started to understand that I started, I understood my avatar in business. I understood, you know, why I was doing some of the things I was doing, but there was always something missing. There was always a missing component. And part of what I'm teaching in the mindset, if you're going to be a business owner on this is bringing in your core values and what are they, and then living from them and bringing them into your business. Because the way I've always looked at it, that who I am, my business is an extension of me. Now, how that showed up in the world during all these years was not what it is. But today that's becoming more and more real. Who am I in the business world? And there are so many tools out there that can start demonstrating that. Now, I don't like to do social media. I, I, I get it, but I don't like it. And I, and I do very little on social media because I have been on the receiving end of hate and nastiness and all of that. And I don't need that in my life. You know, if you can't do this to my face, then you're not even worth being around because I think that social media sometimes is a perfect way to be a bully because you, because if you were in somebody's face, you wouldn't necessarily do it, but you can do it behind a monitor and hide. And I think that's just wrong. And so I don't do a whole lot on social media. So I'm going to do the things that are, that work for me and that make me feel good. I'm going to go out and talk to people. I'm going to get on stages. I'm going to go to seminars. And if I need to go to seminars or not, I'm going to go to seminars mainly because I want to get and become a, a, a keynote speaker. So how else am I going to do that? I have to get out in the world and show up, but it's not through social media in my opinion. I mean, I have the platform. They can see me if they want to. My website shows that I've been on stage. So that's, that's the whole thing is, you know, I'm getting more and more in alignment with myself. When I decided that my ultimate mission, the journey of the awakening spirit, all of this is about ending our suffering. 
it's really about ending, ending our suffering and remembering who we are. And we can't remember who we are as long as we're suffering. And we have to go in, not out, in. We go in to go home. And that's why I walked around my whole life with my suitcase in my hand because I was going home. I wasn't going to stay here on this godforsaken planet. I was leaving. My bags were packed until I was 50 some years old. And then I went, I had to go in. And when I went in is when the changes started. When I really came back into my body because I was disassociated for 50 years of my life. Okay. 50 years I was disassociated. You want to tell me what happened in my life back then? Memorable. I have a few memorable things, but people say, well, we had this conversation. We had this. And it was like, well, I wouldn't have said that, but I don't remember you. I don't remember the conversation. I don't remember 90% of my life. Okay. I don't, and I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't mean anything. That is my past. I'm going into my future. I'm here now living now. As I'm living now and I deal with it. The other thing that people have to understand as well, as we ascend, we are going up in a vibrational ship. We are leaving the fifth, the third dimensional world. We are going to be anchored in the fourth and fifth dimensions. If you do not know how you feel and you can't assimilate what's happening on the outside that's going on on the inside with you, how are you going to survive this? Because a fourth dimensional and a fifth dimensional energy frequency that we are going into is not 3D. It is not about what's up here. It's not about what comes out of your mouth. It's about what are you feeling? If you can't find the subtleties in your body now, how are you going to go through that? This is so important to go in and what do you think and how do you feel? You need to understand that about yourself because when these energies come in, how are you going to deal with it? There's going to be so much fear around you because you're going to have all these feelings and not know what's going on that you think the boogeyman's coming and the monster's under the bed and in the closet and everything else all those childhood fears, you're going to be feeling those as we shift into a different vibrational frequency. I've been in these frequencies and I have been really high in some of them. And I understand when I'm in a new vibrational frequency and I have to sit and be because it's not a normal navigation of what we're used to. You have to learn how to navigate new energies you're in those energies because your body can handle those energies or you wouldn't be there. When I bought this house, I didn't go up one or two rungs. I, I did a paradigm shift and I didn't go up a couple of rungs. I went up several. It took me a year to assimilate what happened. I had to put all of my bills in an Excel spreadsheet and when they were due to be paid because I didn't even know how to pay my bills. You know, you start a new mortgage and you're not making your mortgage payment. Yeah, that doesn't work very well. So that's the whole point is you have to have tools in place that when you don't know what's happening to you to be able to like ground it in and remember how to go into the habitual state of your life. And I had to use that Excel spreadsheet probably for six months before I anchored enough of it in. And then a year later I realized, why I didn't move, why I, I felt like I was a bump on a log for that year. I really did because I didn't know how to navigate. And it wasn't that I was in a farm community in a little town in Johnstown, Colorado. It wasn't that I, you know, you could say that, but it wasn't that it was bigger than that. And I had to navigate and find my way around as this ascension continues starting in November you're going to have to discover new ways to operate in the world and to navigate differently than what you are. It's going to be more feeling. It's, it's going to be softer energies, subtler energies. Like you're going to get this, like there's something out, there's something going on. I feel it. I don't know where it is. And you look and you look and you look. And this is kind of like, I think it was in the secret where they were talking about, the shaman in a group on an island could see the ripples in the wave, but he couldn't see the boat out at sea. But he could see that there was something there, but he couldn't see it, he couldn't see it, he couldn't see it, but he looked and he looked and he looked and he looked. 
And then one day he saw the ship because his consciousness wasn't aware of a ship. They were natives to an, a remote island. When we are in this new energy, that's what you do. You sit and you look and you look and you look and you look. I do that all the time in my life. I have always done that. Something's not right. Something's amiss. Okay, what is it? What does it feel like? Where is it going? Where did it come from? And I backtrack to figure out where this feeling, thought, experience, whatever it is, came from. As we sit and we're in this energy and you have to learn to be quiet and be still. You don't have to meditate if you won't want to, but just be still and ask. Ask what this is. Ask to be shown what this is because it's in that quiet stillness is when the answers will come. It could come in a dream. It could come when you wake up in the morning. It could be going on right before you go to bed or you could be preparing dinner and all of a sudden you have this aha moment. As long as you're asking, what is this? And you're paying attention to your present moment. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. And then you just find people that have been there, done that to help the, to help you navigate these new energies because it is going to get chaotic out there. I promise you it's already chaotic now. I mean, I, I saw a, what was it? Sal said, showed me a, he's from Chicago has a video that this woman is in her backyard and there's two guys coming in, holding her at gunpoint, going through so they could steal her car and her husband comes out and he's at gunpoint and they're trying to do something. And this is in a backyard in Chicago. Hello, backyard. That's a problem. And so I, I, I don't wish this on anyone, but it's a wake up call. These are wake up calls that we are getting is we have to change the way we think, the way we operate, the way we do things, what we speak, how we speak it. If you don't want that in your world, then don't create it. Don't speak it. Don't think it. Don't feel it. Let it go. What do you want? Because the minute I decided I wanted to be a better person and I wanted to, and I started doing things differently, my world changed around me. People were like friendly and nice because I was being nicer to me, not to anybody else, to me. If I'm being nicer to me, I'm going to be nicer out in the world. And then that comes back. And that's why all of this coming out that I'm doing now is because for the last three years, I have been working on myself to come out, to feel safe, to feel protected. And the one thing that I discovered yesterday is for the first time in my life, deep within my being, I feel safe and I'm at peace. I'm not fighting head trash. I'm not dealing with suffering in silence. I'm not feeling angry or resentment or shame or belittlement or frustration or anger. I feel peace. Now, I may still sound like I'm angry at times and all of that, but that's a habit. And so now I'm working on breaking those habits to where I feel like the inside of me comes out a little bit more, but we change from the inside out. But I know that things have changed in me. I can see it. I can see it in how I speak. Yeah, I'm still cranky. I get that. I, I still get grumpy. We all do. We're still human. But I'm having less and less of those days and I'm finding more and more peace in my life because of this. And it's because of all the hard work that I've done. And that's what's so critical. And I think that's why there are so many people out there. There's a lot of fake people just taking your money and not delivering. I know that too. And that's why I don't trust most people in some of these fields. And I do a lot of research on them. And that's why I always suggest if you're going to give somebody money, really research on what they've done. Where's their life been? What have they done? How are they speaking? Are they really speaking to your heart or are they just doing a bunch of sales pitch rhetoric that you're buying into because they know how to manipulate you? When you want to work with somebody, you want to know that that person did the work so they can help guide you out of the, out of the, the muck that you're in. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the bold, brave TV network. 
basically what I'm saying is I am here to offer my services to anyone who is looking to want to make a change in their life. And it's very simple and is very grounded in what I'm doing. If you want to know what your purpose in life, I actually have a problem or a problem. I have a technique that helps you to dial in on that soul vision. When I did this exercise the first time, I, I mean, I've always been told my soul vision and that's the one thing your purpose is in what your experiences of life are. There's always a pattern that you're going to follow. There's always a pattern. It's just learning how to connect the dots of your life to understand what your purpose is. When I redid this, I think in February or March, I redid my soul vision and spirit actually came through and talked to me about part of this too. And it talked about where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I'm bringing in. And the thing is, is that they're already starting to show me what that is. You know, I'm going to write a new language, whatever that meant. And I'm beginning to understand what that new language is, because I'm also going to be working with in the con quantum mechanics and how to get to where you want from point A to point B faster. I'm learning how to do that now. I don't know how to do that or what that looks like, but it's going to be that, but it's not going to be termed quantum physics or quantum mechanics or whatever. It's going to be something different. But the whole point is, is that I have enough tools in my tool belt to help people get through wherever they need to get through. And the biggest things that I've put forth in my programs and in the coaching programs and the training courses that I have with the tr is the simplicity of where you need to start. Where do you need to start with your thinking? You want to get into alignment and then you start doing all of that because as you start going into alignment and moving into a different direction, your paradigms are going to show up. Your self-limiting beliefs are going to come up and they are going to scream at you. I promise you they will scream at you. And so I have techniques and how to work through the limiting beliefs. I know how to do that, which makes this really easy to move through that. I also allow you to be human where some places people don't allow you to be human, but you need to be in that human experience. You need to trust. We live in ebbs and flows and you need to find balance in the ebbs and flows. I've learned how to do that. And that's just in the last couple of months that I've learned to balance the ebb and flow in my life. And it's, it's nice. I kind of like the ebb and I like the flow. I like both of them equally now, but I've learned to make peace with a lot of it. When I'm feeling like I'm not moving fast enough, like I tell my coaches, I don't want to disappoint you. And I don't feel, and they're like, you can never disappoint me. You're a child of God. You will never disappoint me. Why do you say that? And it's because it's an old limiting belief of my parents. And, and I'm like, where did this come from? But the whole point of doing that and feeling that way is because I don't, I, I want to be able to be aware of where I'm going and what I'm thinking. And I want to trust in where I am, that it's okay to allow. So we think that we should be doing, 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 doing all the time, but that doesn't work. Being that person is what brings things to you, which allows things to flow to you. And I feel like I am really learning what that means because I'm a doer and I get a lot done. And then I, then I sit and I be, and sometimes, you know, I, I don't do the head chatter as much as I used to, but I still think, well, I'm not doing all this. And then I realize how much I've gotten done. And then it's like, well, I just have to finish this and this and this and this and this. And then, and then today is oh, what if they say yes? And it's like, but I don't have this and this and this done. And it doesn't matter. I have enough done. It doesn't have to be perfect and it's not going to be perfect because it's an evolving living being what I'm creating. But the whole point is, is that I'm allowing things. And when I come back into my head and get out of my heart is when I get into the overwhelm. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit too, is that, you know, when we feel overwhelmed it's because we're back here, we're not in our hearts. We need to stay in our hearts. We need to stay in the present moment. And when you do that, things just seem to naturally flow. And that's what I wanted to be. I want to be the fool. I want to be in total trust that I am taken care of and provided by the universe. That's a very hard place to be, but it's a goal that I'm aspiring to. And that, and with that said, 
that's going to conclude what I have to say. And obviously, Lynn, something came up where she wasn't able to join us this week. And it's what it is. But I want to thank all of you for joining me today. I do appreciate your time and your any comments that you have. I do appreciate that. And if you found value here, I'd appreciate it if you would send the link to your friends or family. I would love it if you would like and subscribe to the show as well. And I'm also always open for discussion. So if anything, if you're struggling with anything that I talked about, feel free to reach me at bravetv at kathleenmflanagan.com. And we can set up a, a call and help you get through this because that's part of what I want to do is to be able to connect with you. Um, my books, Dancing Souls, The Call, The Dark Night of the Soul and Awakened are up on amazon.com and kathleenmflanagan.com. Please be sure to visit kathleenmflanagan.com for the list of services and products that I'm offering there. And I also have that free three-minute de-stress meditation. It's a great way to, to start your day. It's a great way to end your day. It just gets you back into alignment and feeling good to where it's eliminating some of the stresses that you might feel in your day. And then don't forget to visit awakeningspirit.com and enter brave tv into the coupon code for the 40 percent discount and the same applies to grandma's natural remedies.net for a 20 percent coupon for 20 percent discount coupon code brave tv okay tongue tied got it anyways i want to say thank you so much again for joining me today i really do appreciate it um i will see you next tuesday at 4 p.m eastern standard time and from my heart to yours i hope you have a Fabulous week.